Holy <laughs> That looks are frustrating. Okay, dynamic effort squat day, max effort pull day. And the goal is to continue building off of what we figured out last week and do less shitty. And the reason I'm running box squats for speed is I'm trying to get some assertiveness back in the hole. But the only way you're gonna get a box squat to do that for you is if you're assertive on the box. That means no fall into the box, no bouncing on the box, and no rocking back and swinging forward to get off. Okay, you got whatever the hell three reds and a green is for work sets, but before we do that. Sick of cookie cutter programs and copy and paste coaching? Get the mentorship to learn how to coach yourself. Hit that link below, sign up for Team Activated. We will make you a better lifter. Pull, pull, pull. Yep. Pull, pull, pull. Yep. Sit. Pull. There you go. Thank you, forward. Squat. Pull, pull, pull. Yep. Good. Pull. Forward. Squat. Pull. Good. Pull, pull, pull. Drive. Yep. Drive. Pull in. Good. Fuck yeah. Generally, that is going in the right direction. Still need to figure out a little bit more with like my brace set sequencing in this body weight, but what I'm excited about is I really felt lower abdomen locking up hard in the hole, and that's when I need to have some pop. Gonna try to dial that little further back from the bar, more knees over top of it, dealio now. And I hate deadlifts because like warm-ups have a tendency to betray me because no matter what when it's light, it always feels good. And then I don't know if I'm fucking up or not until it gets heavy. So I'm really hoping that I'm not fucking this up. This is the find out if I'm fucking it up set, so let's not fuck it up. Like, not fucking good, but at least a little better. I don't know. Holy fucking fuck. That looks are frustrating. But that's like what makes Carlton fun because when I figure this shit out, it is gonna feel so rewarding. And like what I tell myself on the days when things don't move the way I want it to, and it feels really hard and it's really fucking frustrating, I always remind myself that someone else would go and pout in the corner and cry and quit, but I'm gonna do my thing and get at least something out of this. But first we're gonna watch Joel do abusive things to 705. And what I gotta do here is think taller on the wedge. <laughs> Told you fuckers. And at this point I kind of am considering that I may have overhurt myself a little bit with all the volume I did. So gonna do one more set, see if I can bring it a little bit better, but we're gonna watch Joel 
be an asshole again. Yeah. In it. Yep. Big ass. Yeah. And this is the wait the fuck up and remember who I am kind of set. And still very fucking frustrating. I think at this point, what I need to do is just go down and do it right. And like, it's fucking embarrassing to miss 285. It's embarrassing to have to drop down to 240. But if I want to claw my way out of this pool of shittiness, I need to do what's going to be necessary to climb out. And you know what? At this point, I kind of am regretting all the sumo pulling and the lack of extra pulling through the diet. But you know what? We're here. This is about 13 weeks. We're going to figure this shit out. And I'm realizing what I really need to do here is quit fucking around looking for a magic solution and just do the damn thing over and over again until I establish some consistency. And then I can start looking at fine tuning. It's like, Right now, I got no groove. I got no consistency. I don't know where the fuck I am in time and space. And until I establish that, changing shit isn't going to help me. Yeah. Yeah, so answer is no think just pull wrong direction on the aperture there we go lights right i think based on how that one felt both fatigue wise and figuring out shit wise the wise choice is going to be foregoing the secondary getting another set here trying to dial it in just trying to fucking do the thing the way it's supposed to be done Yeah, right call. And now that that bullshit's over, on to the part of the workout I've been looking forward to all day. Because we're going to do some testing out with the ATG Nordic bench thingy. Fuck. Which is way fucking harder than I want it to be. And I think the plan is to start up high and then gradually go lower until I die. And holy fuck, this angle is terrifying already. And what is really gnarly about this thing compared to how I normally run Nordics here is this thing lets me get the full knee extension, whereas the other way, I'm still not locked out. 25 degrees. Let's see if we die. realizing that I should have started at a lower angle because I didn't think I would make it this many sets. Whatever, we probably need it after how shitty those deadlifts were. If this goes okay, I'm liking my chances of making it all the way to the bottom. But I'm thinking like the difference between 10 degrees to zero degrees looks pretty severe. Well, I'm trying to fucking train my goddamn knees, Joel, not my hamstrings. I don't know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> Fuck, that was bad. <laughs> to be clear, when you do this at home, your reps shouldn't look like that. So actually training on it, freaking stoked. 
feels phenomenal. Like the ability to ease in, start super high up, start easy, start reasonable, still get full range of motion at the knee and then make it disgustingly hard and eventually like progress to adding weight. Like, yeah, I am happy that I now have one of these. And before you guys go thinking that these reviews are far too positive, remember what I say about this thing. Next up, we're gonna simultaneously do chin-ups and test Sony's low light capabilities because all the lights on this side of the gym are burned out right now and the camera is set to ISO 16,000. <laughs> Am tired, but who gives a shit about that because we want to be good at this lifting weights thing. <sighs> yeah. And on that note, my only goal here is to reset the standard and actually pull the bar down to my chest. Like, good luck with that asshole, right? Oh my God. I'm actually so weak in the bottom end that it is pathetic. Dropped it way down because I need to find out if that is just blatant weakness or the end of my shoulder range. Oh God. Oh God. Like, it is range, but that's also very, 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 very weak there. So, we're going to work on it. I think I'm just going to spend time at the bottom to really challenge where it needs challenging because going to the top doesn't feel very productive. And this feels insanely productive. That's embarrassing, but I think we're on to something because holy shit. I don't know, I feel like Wednesday's standing ab day at this point, so we're doing standing abs. So yeah, not super happy with how the deadlifts went, but I also understand that at this point in the training cycle, at this point of firing things back up again after the diet ended, like, it's what I need to go through. It's necessary to go through this shit if I want to get my pull to come back. And like, I really probably should have expected this better because every time I've gone from 300 down to 250, like it's twice now where I've started pulling conventional and it's like, fuck, this sucks. And every time it hasn't been just like a needing to like change position or change queuing or change whatever. It's just like a fucking needed to hammer through it and relearning how to do it and relearning how to be strong here. And that's not going to happen by tweaking shit. And if I just keep tweaking shit and expecting it to work, it's not going to work because what is needed right now is literally just more work and more digging in. I think like the best thing I can do for next week is almost just like fuck trying to do anything max effort and just aim to get two good sets in at like 260 kilos. And if I can get two decent reps in 260 next week, that means I can probably get two decent rep sets in at 275 the week after and so on and so forth and start kind of bumping up and building up that way with things that are in the pocket rather than just going until the bar gets stuck to the floor and getting pissed off and then having a hard time after that. And like, obviously we want to smash it all the time. Obviously we want to do as good as we can, but like every training day isn't going to be phenomenal. And you're going to have sessions that freaking suck and sessions that challenge the shit out of your fortitude. I think like the biggest goal for Team Activated isn't to show lifters how to never have bad sessions, but the goal of Team Activated is to be able to talk young lifters and coaches through how to navigate these sessions better because I wasn't always this good at staying positive in the face of adversity. I wasn't this good at being able to compartmentalize bad sessions and still get good work in. I would let these sessions compound and snowball and turn into a way bigger shitstorm than it needed to be. And I think that the biggest thing that took me from, you know, like 17, 1800 pound total to 2100 pound total was just learning how to navigate this shit. So if you want help figuring out how to get through rough patches, how to make progress when things don't feel good and how to really just do the work that is necessary, check that link below out, sign up for Team Activated because my goal is to make everyone I can the best lifter that they can possibly be.